What happens when you get something to fix only to realize you're not the first person who's been there and the problem it's having is not going to be easy to repair. That's the case with this chainsaw. After working on it, I soon realized I was working on someone's failed attempt to fix it. Now it's my turn, but now I see the real issue it's having and it may not be related to what I've already fixed. This one is not going to be easy. In today's video, we're going to look at this entry-level steel chainsaw, and the problem is that it starts and runs, but it won't stay running long enough to do any real work. The other issue I have with it is that the saw didn't come with a bar and chain, which I'm sure they had a good reason not to include it, but it will make testing the saw impossible to do, but we'll do the best we can with it. Now, I'm going to try and repair this chainsaw, but yours might be a little different, so this might not work on yours. So if things are not working out for you, like in the video, please ask about it, and I'll be glad to answer your questions. If you didn't see the last video on this chainsaw, we did some diagnostic work and soon realized that someone had already worked on the saw and they had bought and installed most of an aftermarket carb kit. After looking up the kit on the site they bought it from, the kit came with a carb fuel line, fuel filter, oil strainer, air filter, and even a spark plug. And after seeing what's left in the box, it would seem that they replaced the carb, the fuel line, the air filter, and finally the fuel filter. Now after installing these parts, this is what the saw was doing. So that's what it was doing when we first got it. What I thought was happening was that the aftermarket carb might have been faulty or that it needed to be adjusted to give more fuel to the engine. Unfortunately, you cannot adjust the aftermarket carb or even the OEM carb because the adjustment screws do not have any heads to turn. Now luckily they gave me the OEM carb and I figured the best thing to do would be to service the carb and then try it again, seeing as how the OEM carb is a lot better quality. After servicing the carb, here's how it went. As you can see, it did exactly the same thing, which got me kind of worried that the issue was not related to the carb, but I still believe it's running out of fuel, and it wasn't the carb's fault. So in the last video, I received a lot of great comments about there being a possible air leak. The only issue is that I find it difficult to believe that an air leak would allow the engine to start and run, and then leak to a point to stop it within less than a minute of running. So I was still set on looking for a fuel-related issue. Now just for my information, I did do a compression test and even though the main goal of the test was to confirm if the engine was worn out, it did at least confirm that the engine was not worn out and is also very healthy, which is always good to know, especially when we're talking about a chainsaw. Now a compression test is not going to confirm if we have a seal or a gasket issue, but to do that test we'd have to pressure test the engine, which is something I'm not prepared to do just yet. I was also asked to check the gasket at the carb and the engine, but as you can see, it's still in great shape. Now, it's not a paper gasket. Instead, steel calls it a sleeve, but its purpose is the same. I also don't think this is the problem. Now, installing the fuel line to the carb, I was not happy with how easy it was to slide onto the barb. The strange part is that this is a new fuel line, and you think it wouldn't be this easy to put on or take off. We'll talk more about that here in a bit, but I'm going to address a different comment first. From the other comments, I was asked to check the duckbill valve inside the tank. Now, for those of you who are not aware of it, the tank has to have a way for air to get inside it. Otherwise, the fuel will have a difficult time leaving the tank. The duckbill valve is a check valve that allows air to enter the tank and therefore allows fuel to get to the carb. Now, if the duckbill were to be stuck closed, it would starve the carb and the engine of fuel. But as you can see, it's not stuck and I can put the tip of my screwdriver into it. The other reason the duckbill is not the cause of our issue is that if the carb was starved of fuel, I would not be able to get the engine started again, but that's not the case at all. Once it's stalled, I can start it again, and after 10 to 20 seconds, it will stop again. If the duckbill was stuck, the chances of it starting again would be very low. While I have the tank open, I'm going to examine the fuel filter. I want to see if there's an issue with it, and I also want to confirm if it's the OEM one or the aftermarket one. 
Unfortunately, this molded fuel line is extremely short and shaped in such a way that I can't grab the head of the filter. Instead, I'm forced to grab it where I can, and that's unfortunately at the line. That means to get it out, I'll have to disconnect it from the line while it's still in the tank. This is when I realized something. The fuel line is extremely loose around the barb for the filter, and it may not be sealing around it like it should. So if the fuel line was a bit loose, wouldn't it just be pulling in some unfiltered fuel then? Well, that's the beauty about being a penny pincher. So when I do the testing, I don't fill the tanks all the way up. Right now, it's probably only about halfway full. That means this end of the fuel line might be out of the fuel and in the air. Now, this wouldn't have been an issue if I just filled the tank up all the way, but doing it this way revealed that we might have an air leak when the fuel level drops to a certain point. But wait, it gets even worse. So here are both fuel filters. The one on the right is the aftermarket one I just took out of the tank, and the one on the left is the OEM one they were nice enough to put back into the box. Notice anything different? For once, size really does matter because the fitting on the OEM filter with the steel logo on it is much bigger than the aftermarket one. And because the opening on the fuel line is so large, I think it's not sealing as well as it should be and allowing the possibility for any air in the tank to get into the fuel line and disrupt its flow to the carb. Now this is just a theory and I can't prove it just yet, but there's nothing wrong with installing the OEM filter back onto the new fuel line and see if that helps out. I can tell that it's not as easy to put this OEM filter back onto the line versus taking the other one off. Now since we fixed a possible air leak at one end of the fuel line, I think we need to deal with the other end as well. Like I said earlier, I didn't like how loose this end of the fuel line felt, so to deal with that, I'm going to make a ring out of wire to go around the end of the hose. Now, this should help reduce the chance of an air leak here as well. I know it's hard to see, but the OEM carbs fuel fitting only has one flare on the fitting, while the aftermarket one has two. I think this was done on purpose to help seal better, but since we're using this carb, there is a slim chance of an air leak. Now, after getting the wire in place and back onto the fitting, it's noticeably more difficult to install, which is a lot better. So this time it ran twice as long as the last time, but it still stopped. Now I'm not the type to give up so easily. I'm going to try it again and see if it's at least consistent. Well, it's definitely a lot better than before. In fact, this is very promising. At least it ran long enough that it felt comfortable enough adjusting the idle speed, but it still stopped, and the way it stopped made it seem as though the carb wasn't able to give enough fuel to the engine, especially when squeezing the trigger. Now, normally for the situation, I would adjust the carb to deliver more fuel, but since I can't make any adjustments, the only thing I can do is to just replace the OEM carb with the aftermarket one. Here you can see the double flare on the fuel fitting on the aftermarket carb, as though they knew it was going to be an issue with the new fuel line. Now to save time, I'm not going to show me swapping out carbs and we'll move on to the testing.
It's really strange, but as I run the saw more and more, it seems to be running longer each and every time. Now, this was not happening before, otherwise I would have noticed it in the test runs I made before starting the filming. So this time it ran for a bit longer than last time, but I guess there's nothing left to do except start it up and see if it gets better again. Well, I guess it's working now. This time I had to turn it off with the switch instead of it deciding when to turn off. So in its final configuration, the saw has a new carb, new fuel line, and the old fuel filter. And let's not forget about a half tank of fuel. It's kind of a weird combination, but hey, it works, and it's certainly better than what it was doing before. The most interesting part of this whole ordeal was that if I had filled the tank up from the beginning all the way to the top when I first got the saw, I don't think I would have even had an issue, but luckily I was stingy enough to leave it half full, otherwise we'd never have found the issue. So you might be thinking, how did the other person who was working on it before realize there was an issue as well? Simple, they did the same thing I did. They too weren't going to fill the tank up either, but once they realized it wasn't running correctly, they passed it off for someone else to fix, so this was basically a happy accident. Now I will admit by the end of this repair things were not looking good and I was almost at the point of getting a new carb that had adjustment screws on it but fortunately I was simply too stubborn to give up so soon. So my question is would you have thought the fuel line or fuel filter could have been the issue or would you have moved on to another carb, replaced the spark plug or pressure test the engine to check for a leaking seal? To be honest I never knew a poorly fitting fuel line would be the culprit. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects, and I hope to see you in the next video.